Welcome to Sailing with the Jameses. We're the James family. And we live on board our boat, Shining Light, full time. We're currently on the east coast of Australia with plans to sail around the world. This week, we are sailing from Morton Bay to Double Island Point. But right before departure, we find a major issue with our anchor. So today it's pretty ordinary outside. It's blowing and there's a fair bit of rain, so it's the perfect day for boat jobs. Now, one of the first ones we're gonna do is, um, we've been a little bit short on power here. So if you look at our Victron controller here, basically, uh, it hasn't gone to float. It's been bulk, 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 and we've slowly, that day it went to float. But apart from that, we're slowly getting behind in power. So we want to go around and just refine the boat as much as possible and um, see what is using power. Things like uh, this radio here doesn't turn off. So I want to have a look at maybe putting an extra switch in or, or, or seeing what's going on there. That radio, none of the buttons really work on it, but it, it's important to us because it is where we get the sound for our TV. And we like our TV, so we'll see how we go. And inside the cupboard here, there's a few little things like when we turn the inverter on, there's a double plug here. It also has a night light on it. So we'll take that one out of the circuit. We'll also turn the TV off. That's the 240 power to the TV. There's another plug here that goes up into the system. Um, and I think that was maybe for an old TV, so we'll remove that wiring, have a look at what all these plugs do, and just uh, go around the boat and try and uh, cut back in our power consumption. All right, so we've uh, removed the old TV power cord. That's here, the 241. Uh, don't worry folks, there's still another one there for when we do plug into shore power on the rare occasion. Um, what we've found is that the radio here is linked into the same power cord down here. So that white one that goes up uh, powers the booster for the antenna of the TV and the radio. And then the other one it just uh, goes to our USB ports. So order to turn it off every time we're just gonna have to click it out like that and I'll keep an eye on our power consumption and see if that makes a difference so one of the other jobs that we're doing today while the weather's a bit average outside is um, in Charlie's room we put in this bar here um, and we're finding it um, she's getting bigger she's growing up so fast um, and we're coming into potty training where she's going to need to use the toilet during the middle of the night and her climbing over it is getting a bit, bit difficult. Um, and also when it's down like this, climbing over it here to get down to the stairs. Um, on the last boat, it sat between the mattress and the board, so it was easy to climb over. So today we're going to be swapping the bar out for a piece of bungee keeping the netting and we're going to put these side hooks in the side there like that and um, the bungee will just go across from here to there and she'll be able to step on it it'll go down and she can use the stairs um, yeah she's just growing up too fast We have finished Charlie's bed. Um, so it's no longer the bar here, it's now the bungee cord. So it's attached to the wall in the back there and we use the same netting that was here before. But basically the idea was to let her be able to get to the toilet in the middle of the night for potty training and everything. Um, and she can basically pull it down and hop over. 
but this will also catch her if she rolls out of bed. So she spent last night in here and she loved it. And um, we're really happy with the way that this turned out. Um, we did attach it in the far corner. I'll show you guys. So it's attached in the far corner back there to give it more of a lever angle. Because if we attached it right here um, and she pulls down, it just might pull out of the wall. So it's attached in the far back and the other piece is attached over here. And then the netting is screwed in to the bottom like it was before with the with the bar. But we're super happy with it. And that's the final product. Okay, so what we're working on right now is the anchor chain. And when we've been hauling the anchor, it's been rubbing against the side. Um, it had a new roller put on previously and the roller is not doing its job. The anchor is going off the roller and onto the side and scraping uh, the living daylights out of <laughs> the metal. So um, we're coming up with an alternative plan until we can get a new roller. Um, I'll show you what it's looking like. So basically when we've been hauling the anchor, uh, the anchor is supposed to be sitting in this roller and it's been coming out and laying on the side here and you can see that we've gouged out some of the metal and same on the other side we've gouged out some of the metal. We're gonna, I'm measuring this uh, to bring back to Sam so he can cut it to length and these are going to be popped onto the side. So it's not good. We've only been on the boat for a month so it's quite a bit of damage for a month. So we need to do something um, to not do it anymore. <laughs> so Sam's in his workshop. <laughs> I don't want to get my workshop dirty, so I'm doing it out here so I can brush it off. Yeah, we were doing a hull scrub and we just noticed it. So this is just a like the sun setting, last minute temporary measure, uh, just to get us through until we can do something better. And then, yeah. All right. All right, so this is the solution. Is this pipe on the edge so that the chain can rub against this and not the metal? Temporary, temporary solution. Yeah. Temporary. Yeah, see how long it lasts. You never know, some of the temporary jobs are still going years later, so fingers <laughs> crossed. So yeah, you can see that the, the chain's just eating the metal. Oh, yeah, it is really just eating the metal, it's scary. We've only How been much on damage we've done it in a month's time. Yeah. The old roller must have gone like up and around or something. That's the finished product. Got the two plastic things there, which should protect the sides, and they're temporarily held on with the strings. And in the daylight, we'll do a bit more. We are up early at 1 a.m. the next morning to catch the tide out of Morton Bay. We are leaving Tangaluma and headed north up the Queensland coast to Double Island Point. So we're just passing the Sunshine Coast now. News is over there in the distance and um, we're doing 5.7 knots with just the head sail out. And about 11 knots, 12 knots of breeze out. And we've got two, we've got two lures out, one on each side. So we've got a Qantas lure, uh, the redhead, that one, this one, a uh, deep diver. And then we've got um, this little like squid thing, uh, soft jelly on this one. So we'll see if we catch anything. It'd be really good if we could catch something. Um, but we'll see.
There was just a whale, just literally right here. It's early in the whale season, but we just had a humpback whale breach twice. There's a whole heap of whales around the boat, so Kate's just uh, getting in her harness and that now, uh, and she's gonna go off the back <laughs> put the GoPro in and uh, see if we can see them. There's another one there. Yeah. We weren't able to capture any humpback whales on camera, but we did end up getting some very cool footage of our underwater profile. So we're about 15 nautical miles away from Double Island Point. We've just put the head sail away and we've Put out the screecher and we're sailing along nicely. It's about 15 knots of breeze. And screechers out. Yeah, beautiful, eh? Hold the wow. Yeah. And she's done really well today. We've had a bit of average seas and she's just handed it like a legend. So we're really happy with that. She's just sort of smashed through the waves and made the whole journey quite comfortable. Do you see them? Here's one, here's one, here's one. Whoa! Hit us, hit us! Hit us! Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, there's more! Look at them! Yeah! So it's about five o'clock and we're arriving at uh, the tip at Double Island Point. We're just going to go around the corner and to the left and double island points over there and what it's another half hour-ish? Yeah. Another half hour and we're going to drop the anchor outside double island point and then we'll go in tomorrow morning. And we're super excited because we've heard a lot about double island point, heard a lot of good things so um, we're really excited to see it. Approaching the anchorage, we decided to flash up the engine and put the head sail away. We are getting acquainted more and more every day to the boat, but unfortunately on this occasion I let out too much slack in the sheet when we were putting away the head sail, causing it to flap and fold incorrectly. It was an easy fix as we let out the head sail a little bit and then furled it back up nicely again. So we're coming into Double Island Point here. So this is the lagoon down here. So we just read on Avionics that someone's saying that the sandbank actually extends further and you've got to hug the beach um, and don't trust satellite imaging. So it's sundown at the moment. There's the sunset over there. And um, we'll just anchor outside and go in, in the morning. Join us next week as we navigate the shallow entrance to this disappearing anchorage and we get an uninvited guest on board. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and we'll see you guys next week.